Hello everyone. I'm Dr. Alaa Musbah, professor of obstetrics and gynecology, faculty of Medicine Mansour University. The topic of my lecture today is fertilization and the implantation. So, what we wanted to discuss today? The germ cell viability and the movement and how sperm pass through the genital tract, through the cervix, uterus, to the fallopian tube to reach the ova and do fertilization. The definition of fertilization, maturation of the ovarian follicle, ovulation, fertilization, morphologic changes in fertilization, and ovulation to implantation, what is happening, and lastly, the implantation. Let us start our journey. The germ cell viability and the movement, sperm transport and the oocyte transport. Okay, let us start with the sperm transport. Sperm transport, we know that three to 500 million sperm are placed in the posterior fornix of the vagina during intercourse, okay? So this is a seminal pool, the posterior fornix, containing millions of sperms. These sperms, as you see in the picture, pass through the cervical canal, through the cervical mucus, which is cloudy at the time of ovulation under the effect of high estrogen. So these millions of sperms pass through the cervix to the uterine cavity and the, to the right and the left tubes. Okay. To meet the ova which pass through the fimbrial end to the fallopian tube, most fertilization occurs at the ampullar portion. Okay. Okay. So the transport time of sperm. During its journey, take an hour or more, and only 300 to 500 of these millions reach the fertilization site, but only one sperm fertilizes the ovum. Okay, what about the oocyte transport? Oocyte at ovulation is carried in a peritoneal fluid stream produced by the movement of the fimbria of the uterine tube into infundibulum of the tube. So the fluid of the peritoneum making the stream moving the fimbria which pick up the ova and pass it through the fallopian tube. The oocyte pass into the ampulla of the uterine tube due to action of the cilia of the epithelial cells lining the tube and the bimuscular contraction of the tubal wall. So there is two factors helping the movement of the ova is the cilia lining of the cilia lining the tube and the contraction of the muscle of the tube. Fertilization is the union of the male sperm and the female oocyte gametes to form zygote and they make marks the beginning of pregnancy, okay? Embryonic life begins with fertilization and fertilization process requires about 24 hours. As you see in the picture, this is a sperm. It ways to penetrate the ova to reach inside here in the site of life. So, what about the maturation of the ovarian follicle? As you see in the picture, the maturation starts from the primordial follicle. We know that female at child bearing age has 300 to 400,000 of primordial follicle. Each cycle, few follicle in each ovary try to enlarge and mature. So this primary follicle pass through many stages, primary, secondary, tertiary follicle, 
in the cortex to reach the mature graphian follicles. So we have the primary follicle, preantral and antral, and mature graphian follicle. Then ovulation happened with the release of the ova surrounded by corona radiata. Then the remaining part of granulose and sicker cells will form the corpus luteum. This corpus luteum, if pregnancy happen, it will continue its work for eight weeks, then atrophies and become corpus albicans. If no pregnancy, it will atrophy within one week. Okay? So this is the the cycle of the growing follicle, okay, which occur in the cortex. We know that the layers of the ovary, the epithelial layer in the outer surface, then cortex containing the growing follicle, then medulla containing the neurovascular tissue. Okay, so what about the ovulation? Ovulation coincides with the first maturation division and with the elimination of the first polar body. As you see here, with the division, here the division, and elimination of the first polar body. This is the first polar body. So this is the ova. Here, as you see in the picture, this is the ovulation happen, and this is the released ova. The ovum is captured by the embolia of the uterine tube whose fembrae sweep over the ovary. So after ovulation, this ova picked up by the fimbria to the embolary portion. So union of the sperm nucleus of paternal origin with an egg nucleus of maternal origin to form a primary nucleus of an embryo is called fertilization. Fertilization takes place in the distal third of the uterine tube, as we said here. Spermatozoa arrive to the lobium tube after an hour or more of intercourse. The ovum must be fertilized within 24 hours after ovulation. So it is very important to be known. So, what is the morphological changes in fertilization? First, we want to speak about the sperm, which is the male gamete, as you see in the picture, and is derived from Greek word, sperm which means seed. It consists of three parts, as you see in the picture, head, middle piece, and the tail. Head contains the nucleus and the acrosome. Middle piece contains the mitochondria for energy production required to promote sperm, cellular elements, centrioles, microtubules, all this in the midsection. Okay. Then tail, this tail enable sperm movement. As you see, this is a picture of sperm also. The three stages of fertilization include sperm preparation, cavitation and acrosome reaction, sperm egg binding and diffusion, and lastly, meiosis, resumption of oocyte and activation of the zygote. The sperm must undergo capacitation, which means maturation and activation, in the female reproductive tract over several hours, which increases its motility and destabilizes its membrane. What is meant by destabilizing the membrane? The sperm prepares for the acrosome reaction and the enzymatic penetration of the zona pellucida. The sperm pass through the corona radiata, as you see in the picture, this is the corona radiata, and the sperm pass through the corona radiata. Dispersal, dispersal of cells is the result of enzymatic action of the tubal mucosa and the semen. 
Sperm tail movement also help penetration of the corona and zona biliosida. As you see here, this is the corona radiata. This is the penetration of uh, the sperm with the corona radiata by the acrosome and the by enzyme released from acrosome and from the tuber mucosa also. Tail movement also help this penetration, which is very important. Also for penetration of zona pellucida. Zona pellucida is the inner layer. The outer layer is corona radiata, and the inner layer here in violet in color is the zona pellucida. As you see here, there is penetration. Sperm penetrate zona pellucida by action of enzymes released from its acrosome. This is the zona pellucida penetrated by its sperm by the enzymes released from acrosome. Only one sperm enter the oocyte, as you see in the picture here. Only one sperm enter and fertilize the oak. Even though several may penetrate the zona pellucida. So, after penetration of zona pellucida and the entering of the sperm to the cytoplasm, of the ova, there is reaction happen in the zona pellucida preventing the other sperms from penetration. But what if two sperm may take part in fertilization during an abnormal process? This is called dispermy, resulting in triploid embryo, 69 chromosomes, as what is happening in partial moon, if you remember. But this usually end the end a portion or the the resulted embryo die immediately after birth. If two female pronuclei take part in fertilization, it is called woolly guide. Then sperm head attached to the surface of oocyte, plasma membrane of oocyte, as you see in the picture. And the sperm fuse and then pre at contact point as you see in this picture this is the contact then pre here as you see at the contact point hidden detail of the sperm enter oocyte cytoplasm with the sperm's plasma membrane being attached to the oocyte plasma membrane as here in the picture as you see here in the picture also Okay. Once inside the cytoplasm of the oocyte, the sperm tail degenerate. So only the part of the sperm which will be kept inside the cytoplasm is the head containing the nucleus. So the sperm tail degenerate. Oocyte respond by zonal reaction change in zona pellucida inhibit the entry of other sperms as you see due to substance of oocyte cytoplasm. Secondary oocyte completes second matrix division and its chromosomes 22 plus X arrange themselves in vesicular nucleus called the female brew nucleus. The second polar body is extruded now. We know at the time of ovulation, the primary polar body is extruded. A while now, with the second matrix division, the second polar body is extruded from second row start. Okay. Sperm head enlarge and forms the male pronucleus, as you see here in the picture. The male and the female pronuclei, this one and this one. This is the male pronucleus. This is the female pronucleus. 
approach each other in the oocyte center, meet and dissolve and lose their nuclear membrane. They resolve their chromatin into complete single haploid set of chromosomes, which become organized on a spindle. As you see in this picture, this is the sperm, this is the ova, then this is the, the sperm pronucleus and our male pronucleus. This is the female pronucleus. Okay. They approach each other, meet and lose the nuclear membrane, and the fusion happen between both of them. Then mitotic spindle as here in this picture. After the maternal and the paternal chromosomes intermingle metaphase of the first cleavage mitosis takes place and the normal chromosome number is reconstituted. Look to this picture please. This is the grades of mitosis. This is the metaphase, the prophase, metaphase and anaphase. Okay, so metaphase here and the proof is here. Metaphase, there is collection of the chromosomes at the center here. Then anaphase, the sex chromatid shifted, sister chromatid shifted to each side, as you see here. Okay, this is the anaphase. The first two plastomeres are next seen following cell division so we'll reach the two cell stage here as you see in this picture and they are surrounded by zona pellucida look to this picture please this is a two cell stage the segmented blastomere and this is the estimated embryo center. And the other picture here showing the stages of fertilization. This is outside. Sperm penetrate the outside to fertilize the ova with formation of two bronuclei, female and the male bronuclei, which fuse with each other. Then division the happen and two cell stage cleavage happen here then four cell stage, then eight cell stage, then morial is formed from 12 to 16 cell, then early plastocyst, then late plastocyst, which will be implanted in the decidua. This is again how it looks under the microscope, two cell embryo, four cell embryo, eight cell stage, morial, early plastocyst, late plastocyst. What is the consequence of fertilization? Three important parts, activation of the ovum, modification of the cytoplasm and the membrane, modification of the nucleus. What does it mean? Reconstruction or restoration of the diploid number of chromosomes, which is 40 sex chromosomes, as we all know. Determination of the sex by the X and the Y chromosomes of the sperm gamete. We know that the sperm is the one which differentiate or will give us male or female baby. Initiation of the clavage, stimulating the zygote to undergo rabbit cell division. This is the modification that happened in the nucleus. Okay, the unfertilized ovum reach the umbel of the uterine tube and is fertilized in the distal third of the tube by 12 to 24 hour to form zygote. During its passage through the uterine tube until the end of the morial stage, the egg undergoes almost no change in volume and is about 150 millimeters. It remains surrounded by zona pellucida, which it loses upon entering the uterine cavity. So, 
during all the processes of movement or and the development of the fertilized over the zona produces the surrounding head. While entering the uterine cavity, it begins to loss the zona the uterus. The zygote has made its way under the influence of peristaltic movement of the uterine tube and the cellular movement of the tubal epithelium. During its passage, the egg maintains itself on its own reserves and on tubular secretions. Survival of the egg and its transport down the tube as well as implantation of the blastocyst depend on hormonal secretion of the ovary and anterior pituitary gland. Division of the zygote into two daughter cells, the blastomeres, this is the two cell state, takes place by 30 hours. Further division follow rapidly upon one another, forming progressively smaller and smaller blastomeres. Then we will shift from two cell stage here to four cell stage to eight cell stage, then to Moral stage with six, with twelve to sixteen plus to me. Okay. This is happened by day three or four. The twelve to sixteen plus to me stage is a solid ball resembling mulberry, and is called morula, which entered the uterine cavity from the tube. Okay. About day four, fluid enters the middle, the morula from the trine cavity and occupies the intercellular spaces. As you see, the fluid enter here, intercellular, then collect with each other to form a big cyst. Blasto seal, and this is called the blasto cyst. Okay, so. This is a blastocyst, and this is the blastocyst. We are in the stage of blastocyst now, which is ready for implantation. As fluid increases, the cell separates into two major areas. This fluid separates the cell into two major areas. Outer cell layer, which is a trophoblast, which will share in the formation of the placenta. This is the outer trophoblast. This is the outer trophoblast, which will share the formation of the placenta. And the inner cell mass. This is the inner cell mass, which will form the embryo. And the zona is the surrounding from outside disappears rapidly. And this is an important step in preparation for and the arrangement for implantation. Okay, so fluid collect inside. Okay, the the morula making spaces. This this fluid collect with each other, differentiates the cells into two important parts: outer trophoblast. And the inner cell mass, outer trophoblast will form the placenta, inner cell mass will give rise to embryo. Zona bellucida on the outside disappear rapidly. Okay. I wanted to tell you about the decidua, which is the endometrium of the pregnancy. The decidua during Pregnancy differentiated into three layers. Lock to this picture, please. There is compact zone containing the ducts of the glands and the capillaries. This is a compact zone. Spongy zone contains the glands and the vessels. And the basal layer, the deepest part, and the contain the deepest portion of the gland. And the uterine mucosa originates from this layer after delivery or a portion. Okay, it is important also to know that the spongy layer, this layer, 
is the line of cleavage in placental separation. Is the line of cleavage in placental separation. Okay. Let us go to the implantation, and there is three steps: apposition, adhesion, and invasion. This is the apposition. The blastocyst contact the implantation site of the endometrium, and this is the adhesion. The trophoblastic cells, the trophoblastic cells of the blastocyst attach to the receptive endometrial epithelium. This is the adhesion, and this is the invasion. The invasive trophoblastic cells cross the endometrial epithelial basement membrane and they invade the endometrial stroma as you see here, invasion of the endometrial stroma here. Normal area for implantation is the upper posterior wall, 60% of pregnant lady and 40% upper anterior wall. The trophoblast cells over the embryonic pool of the blastocyst penetrate the epithelial cells of the uterine mucosa at about day six or seven. Penetration or and the erosion of the epithelial cells of the mucosa result from proteolytic enzymes produced by the trophoblast. The uterine mucosa also promote proteolytic action of the blastocyst. As you see here, this is the decidua binding of the uterine cavity. This is the blastocyst invading the decidua, passing through the stroma. This is the site, this is the inner cell mass. This is the cytotrophoblast, and this is the syncytiotrophoblast with finger like projection and the invading through the stroma. So, cytotrophoblast, syncytiotrophoblast, and the inner cell mass which will form the embryo. Okay, cyto and syncytiotrophoblast will form the placenta with the decidua bezales. Okay, as the invasion, please look to this picture. As the invasion of the uterus proceeds, the trophoblast differentiate into two layers. Two layers. The syncytiotrophoblast is the outer one, and the cytotrophoblast is the inner one. As you see here, this is the syncytiotrophoblast, and here is the cytotrophoblast. So, this is the two epithelial layer. Of course, cytotrophoblast is a mononucleated cell, while syncytiotrophoblast is a multinucleated structure, it has no cell boundaries. And the syncytiotrophoblast form finger-like projection, as you see here, here, and here. This is the finger projection of the syncytiotrophoblast, and this is the cytotrophoblast and this is the inner cell mass. By the end of week one, the blastocyst is superficially implanted in the compact layer. At the time of implantation, the trimucosa is at day 21 of the menstrual cycle and is richly vascularized edematous and secreting mucus and the glycogen, favoring implantation of the blastocyst. As you see in the picture, this is the blastocyst implanted inside the decidua. This is the cytotrophoblast, and this is the syncytiotrophoblast, and this is the inner cell mass becomes differentiated. The, the one with yellowish in color is the endoderm, it will be the endoderm, while the bluish one will be the ectoderm and the mesoderm will develop in between. Okay? So, as the blastocyst is implanting early differentiation of the inner cell mass occurs, this is the inner cell mass differentiating into ectoderm, mesoderm, endoderm. From here, from here, this side to this side, ecto, meso, and the endoderm. The embryonic endoderm 
a flattened layer of cells appear on the surface of the inner cell mass facing the blastocyst cavity. This is the blastocyst cavity and this is the endoderm. Okay, everybody happy new year 2021. I, I hope you will have a very nice days in this year and my all best wishes for you and lastly thank you